duty and service. And therefore, she sought to embody the kind of monarchy that her, her uncle had failed to embody. And that notion of a service, of duty, has really appealed, I think, both to the British public and to a Commonwealth public. This idea that this individual will put public service and the welfare of others ahead of her own personal desire. I think that explains some of the strong affectionate emotion that people have had for Elizabeth II over the last 70 years. And you're absolutely right to go back to the start of our conversation. You know, she only uh, greeted a new prime minister this week, I think demonstrating a dutiful role, that dutiful nature, right through to the very end. Ed, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much indeed uh, for your perspective and analysis. Uh, good to have you with us at this time. Thank you. Uh, just to recap, Queen Elizabeth II, the UK's longest serving monarch, has died at Balmoral Castle in Scotland, aged 96. She reigned for 70 years. Her family gathered around her at the Scottish Estates after concerns grew uh, earlier on Thursday. Queen Elizabeth came to the throne in 1952, witnessed enormous social change, as we've been talking about, uh, and with her death, her eldest son, Child, Charles, the former Prince of Wales, will now become king. Uh, Buckingham Palace earlier issued a statement saying that the Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. Uh, the King and the Queen consult uh, will remain at Balmoral this evening and they will return to London tomorrow. So you will see King Charles and uh, his consort Camilla coming to London tomorrow. Let's Try and reconnect with Rob Matheson, our correspondent, who's live outside Balmoral Castle uh, in Scotland, where the Queen died earlier today. So, Rob, I hope you can hear us all right. Just tell us more about what you're seeing around you and what the feeling's like. Well, people have gathered 